double performance is essentially coming to all games and on more GPUs. A new GPU shortage, Nvidia's next gen gets a release date, and Nvidia's in more trouble. Also, for those who are kind of sick of my talking head videos at this point, don't worry, I should be back to my regular videos soon. There's just been a lot of stuff to cover, and I really felt this was the best way to do it. Either way, welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. And first up for today, if you saw my recent FSR3 video, you know that AMD also announced something called Fluid Motion Frames. And unfortunately, when I found out about that news, I had to start recording pretty quickly, so I missed a couple very important details. Plus, there's some really interesting stuff not many people are talking about when it comes to Fluid Motion Frames. Now, before I get to all of that, Fluid motion frames. It's been a little confusing really ever since AMD first fully announced FSR3 and fluid motion frames just because it sounds like fluid motion frames is effectively their terminology for frame generation, but then when you do things when we are talking the release, like look at this data that they provided, you can see they call it frame generation. So it is really confusing, but at least in this context, fluid motion frames is a completely separate technology to FSR3, yet both of them have frame generation. The difference is that fluid motion frames effectively comes at a driver level while FSR3 has to be enabled in each individual game. And that's actually why when this was originally announced, I was talking, hey, 12 games, that's a lot more, and this is technically only a preview driver. You can see here, they even show those 12 games, instant performance for all your games. But get this, it's not just available in 12 games. But first, now's the perfect time to start your career in computer science. Because with today's sponsor, Brilliant, they're giving all of you 20% off their premium membership for life when you use my link at brilliant.org slash gamermel. If you've never heard about Brilliant, they're the only place I trust to learn pretty much anything about computers. Whether it's simple things like how computer memory works to AI and artificial neural networks, it's all here. Whether you're a beginner, professional, professional or what. And the best part is that Brilliant teaches you in the most fun way possible by making you do it yourself. It's really the best way to learn. But don't take my word for it because you can try Brilliant for 30 days free yourself at brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus, when you love it, you can then get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. As you can see right here, it says that it can be enabled in any DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 title. Really the only thing that's all that important about those 12 games is that those games can be automatically enabled using HyperRx. Remember that HyperRx is basically AMD's one-click solution to turn on multiple technologies to give you what AMD considers the best performance. So all these 12 games mean is that you can use HyperRx for it, but you can technically turn it on for any DirectX 11 and 12 title. And this is massive just because obviously, while especially NVIDIA is releasing support for DLSS3 frame generation in many games, there's tons of games that will never get support. So this is a very interesting way of doing that where you can effectively double the frame rate for basically any game. With that said, Unfortunately, at least for this, so it does get really confusing here, FSR3 is supported across a wide range of GPUs across NVIDIA and AMD, but it's only supported in, as of right now, two titles, but AMD's fluid motion frames is supported in tons of titles, but the only GPUs that support it is their RDNA 3 cards, at least as of now, because when we look Right here, this is a bit of an older story when AMD kind of first fully announced their uh, fluid motion frames in FSR3, stating that it would be coming later that month. There was actually an interview with AMD's own Scott Herkelman, and as you can see down here in the statement, it says, quote, if there is good reception of AMD fluid motion frames and gamers believe it to be worthwhile, We'll take it to the next step and see if we can enable it on RDNA 2. If that goes well, then maybe older generations too. Basically, this tech that effectively works across pretty much all modern games could soon be supported across a wide range of GPUs. With that said, keep in mind that they only mention AMD GPUs because this is a driver level solution, so obviously they couldn't 
put that on Nvidia's cards even if they wanted to. And really that's likely a big reason why it's only supported on their newer cards just because it's probably a ton of work to add support to this to drivers. But it may be coming to more. With that said, keep in mind that unfortunately Scott Herkelman recently announced that he is leaving AMD at the end of the year. Though of course if they have plans to do that, it goes beyond people like Scott Herkelman. Now, with all of that said, because it's been out for a little while, some users have actually had a chance to test it out. And for the most part, it works as you'd expect, with some artifacting here and there. But there's one major problem. Apparently, whenever you do really fast movements, it actually turns off fluid motion frames, which means in that moment, you lose about half your frame rate. And I have to admit, it is definitely annoying to say the least, just because one of the most important times you wanna have a faster frame rate is when you're moving around really fast. Now, some people have offered fairly good explanations for this, like for the fact that it is a driver level feature, so it doesn't have full access to things like motion vectors that it would if it was something that was implemented in the game itself. But regardless, that is annoying, though, I will say, if there is somehow no way that they can do it, the good news is that AMD does have Radeon Boost. For those who get confused by all these different names, remember that Radeon Boost, as it says right here, dynamically lowers resolution of the entire frame when fast on-screen character movement is detected via user input, meaning the same thing that gives you more FPS from upscaling, i.e rendering at a lower resolution is exactly what helps with Radeon Boost. Basically, it quickly lowers the resolution of the game as you're doing quick movements and then immediately adjusts it back up. The thought process behind this is that when you're moving really fast, doing very quick motions, it effectively blurs it anyway, so you're not gonna notice the difference no matter what. So, I will say, this is a chance where Radeon Boost can really make up for that and ultimately you can get much faster frame rates. So there is potential for it not being that bad, but at least for now, it is obviously a major issue, but this is really interesting tech that I do believe could seriously change things moving forward. And next up for today, I've discussed more than once now the potential for GPU shortages, even in the gaming industry, specifically because artificial intelligence has begun getting so unbelievably popular to businesses. And this may or may not be what's happening here, but regardless, the RTX 40 series looks to be having shortages in Tokyo's own electric town. As you can see right here, a report citing several PC hardware stores in Tokyo raises concerns about an impending shortage of Nvidia's GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards, particularly at the high end. Japan's IT media PC user has surveyed several electronic stores in Tokyo's famous Akihabara Electric Town District and elsewhere with the conclusion that, quote, the stock of cards equipped with GeForce RTX 4090 slash 4080 is thinning across the city. As for why, they don't really know. There are some theories going around that Nvidia needs to sell more 30 series cards because they have so much oversupply of them, so they're effectively holding back their 40 cards, or it could be something like artificial intelligence driving demand for cards that aren't really used for AI, but because there aren't all that many AI cards to begin with, they don't have a lot of choice. Either way, while this isn't currently a problem in the US, I would definitely keep a lookout. And next up, Nvidia's GTC 2024 event has officially been scheduled. As you can see, it's for March 18th. This is a keynote put on by their own CEO, Jensen Huang, and as you can see here, it will likely be where they announce their next generation Blackwell AI HPC GPUs. And of course, that doesn't mean they're next gen gaming cards, but don't forget that those are also expected to use their Blackwell architecture. So the kind of updates we see there, at least some of those could easily translate to their gaming cards. So this is definitely something to look out for. And lastly for today, as you know, I recently covered a story where in Paris, Nvidia's Paris offices had actually been raided for potential antitrust issues. Well, this time the EU has effectively admitted that they are investigating 
GPU market abuse in wake of Nvidia's office raid. As you can see right here, it says the European Commission has informally started to gather opinions on potential unfair practices related to the GPUs used for artificial intelligence application, Bloomberg reports. The investigators are trying to determine if there is a need for subsequent action, which is a formal investigation. Basically, everyone's sort of freaking out because NVIDIA completely owns the AI market right now. And given it's becoming such a massive market and it's completely propelled NVIDIA into the stratosphere, as we're talking at one point a trillion dollar company, it is obviously understandable that governments are getting a little concerned. With that said, I would argue it's likely a little bit past that. Don't forget that in Paris, when they ended up doing that raid, they were actually given a warrant to do it. And at least in the US, you typically have to have probable cause to do something like that. So obviously the European Commission is in very early stages, but at least with Paris and then them obviously jumping on board, it's looking like this could be a major issue. And the concern is basically that Nvidia is trying to hinder competition from entering the AI market. So while that does it for today, what do you think's going on in Nvidia? And what about AMD's frame generation tech? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.